Just picked up the cheapest plowing ATV I could find on Marketplace. This is a 2005 Polaris Sportsman 500 4x4. So you can see it's actually in pretty decent condition. I do have the gauge for up here. It was kind of falling off on the way home. But uh, the guy said that the owner brought this in for repairs and um, it cost too much for the owner to repair it. So he bought it from the owner and then sold it to me. So that's kind of the, the history on this. He said he replaced a CV axle, went through the carburetor, got it all repaired, and then took it for the first test drive and he said it smoked like crazy. He said this thing was sitting for a long time before the owner took it in. And he thinks maybe that's why it was smoking a lot. Maybe a ring is stuck. He said he doesn't know. He said he didn't have time to dig into it because he wasn't getting paid for it. So it's uh, definitely understandable. Um, it does come with the plow. I believe this is a 48 inch plow. And uh, has all the mounting brackets and everything for it. So we can mount that up. And then it has the winch on the front as well. So it's pretty nice. So it was supposed to snow a bunch today, never did. So we're gonna go test it out in the grass over here, see if it can plow anything. And we'll see if it's smoking. Right now it's missing the battery, so we'll have to hook up something there so we can run this thing. But yeah, not a bad looking machine for $1,000. If we can get it to stop smoking, it'd be worth 25 all day with that plow in there, especially this time of year, so. Hopefully this one turns out to be a good deal. <laughs> what do you think? Check it over. Oh, he's sniffing in the back. What does that mean? Oh, he's going over here. Coming towards the front. Uh-oh. What do you think, then? All right, let's see if this thing fires up here. Smoky. Oh, and she died.
That fit right up. So that's good. She's a little rusty, but uh, let's go test this thing out. See if we can get this smoking to go away. Runaway ATV here. <laughs> I left it in uh, drive and it was running. Oh, snow pretty good, but does the 4x4 work? Now I'll try it with all 4x4, four four, see if it can climb. Alright, this thing's making a beeping sound. It's getting really annoying. But uh, as you can see, 4x4 is working. I uh, took it at 4x4, tried to climb up the hill. Back tires were just spinning. Put it back in 4x4 and climbed up the hill easily. So that, that confirms 4x4 is working. And with these, this is a slip 4x4. So as soon as those front wheels slip, then the 4x4 activates on the Polaris. And uh, Polaris has had that design for a long time. But yeah, so 4x4 works. Um, it goes good. It goes really good. It's just smoking a ton. How many miles are on this thing? Oh, the fan's kicking on. You can hear the fan. 
So it's working. Um, looks like there's 5,184 miles, so I mean, that is pretty high mileage. Lights are working. Headlight works. Those lights are not working. All right, just checking out the CV axles. This, this axle he replaced. Vinny's up there now, what the heck? How'd you get up there, buddy? He just jumped right up there. That is funny. You must want to go for a ride if you're up there. <laughs> you're helping diagnose this thing. So CV axles all look good in the back. Has the original pipe on it, unlike the other one I had. I have like a Harley pipe on it. That one's a little loose. What's going on with that? <laughs> Let's start this thing up again and see how bad this thing smokes after riding it. So unfortunately, our smoking problem did not go away. So let's get this in the garage and uh, start digging into it. All right, so we took the first ride on this thing and uh, it was super smoky. The smoke to me looks blue though. So I'm thinking it's only burning oil, not coolant. But we'll check the oil and make sure. Curious to see what this oil looks like here. <laughs> Looks like there's a new oil filter in there too. Which is great, oh yeah. Well, it looks clear, it's not milky. That's good. Let's see how much oil is in there. I think it's definitely burning oil. Yeah, so it's actually low. And he just did the change. Let's take a peek in the gas tank. All right, gas looks pretty good. I don't think the gas was the culprit. It's not very cloudy, pretty clear. But we're still gonna drain it out. Um, the previous owner said this thing's been sitting for a while, I think since 2018, so, or a little bit before that. So let's drain this out. Add some fresh fuel now that all the gas is drained out. All right, let's see if she still smokes. Pretty sure it's burning oil at this point. All right, let's get the seat off of here. Check out the air box. So 
it looks like there's no air filter in it. So we need an air filter for it. Running without one. I think what we're gonna do now is tear all the plastics down and get the gas sink off so we can get the spark plug out. Um, and then kinda go from there. Underneath here is where the coolant goes. Hopefully it's not too hot. There was some on the cap, so I'm guessing there's plenty in there. Wiring. I noticed the Lights weren't working. I wonder what that's for right there. Red, white, and black. So these lights were not working right here. That one's duct taped up. So maybe the bulbs are out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bulb is completely missing on that one. Let's see if this comes off now. After all that, now you can finally get to the spark plug. Polaris needs to come up with a different design. You have to do all that just to change up the spark plug. That is crazy. Alright, let's see. Yeah, a spark plug is pretty black. You can see it looks like it's been burning oil. All right. You guys keep an eye on that. See what we get here. Throttle open. Let's see what we get. Good compression. Really good. What is that? 190? So plenty of compression. <laughs> That's weird. Where the heck is that oil coming from? So now what we're going to do to check the rings is uh, put some oil down the cylinder. So now if the compression goes up after adding oil to the cylinder, we know that the rings are warm at least a little bit.
let's see what we get. I'm really surprised compression's 190. Throttle open. So compression went up a little bit. We're at like 210 now, so it definitely did go up. Um, didn't go up a whole lot, but it did go up some, so and more than likely is probably the rings. So with a smoking quad, really there's only two possibilities that can occur to make this thing smoke. So it's either the valve seals, which they don't really go bad that often. Um, usually it probably takes more than 5,000 miles for them to get bad, but definitely a possibility are the valve seals and then the piston rings are another very common problem. So. It's either one of those or both of those combined that is causing this quad to smoke or a very unlikely problem. The cylinder is, um, something's wrong with the cylinder. But in that case, you'd see coolant mixing with the oil. Leaning towards either rings or valve seals being the main problem. But uh, let's start tearing this thing down. We gotta get this carburetor out. Um, we've gotta drain the coolant. And uh, I'd like to check out the water pump area as well. We're gonna start by draining the oil just to make sure it's not milky before we continue. See what's on that. Pretty gross looking oil. All right, we have no metal chunks, so that's a good sign. Hopefully bottom and top end are pretty decent, at least. At least nothing's rubbing off and going into the oil. All right, down by the water pump here. There's a drain bolt right there. Oh yeah, there's something coming up. All right, I'm kind of curious to see what this water pump looks like. Hopefully it's still good. It should be. If it's not good, I'm gonna be pretty surprised. Need a new gasket for that. <laughs> All right, water pump looks great. We can take a peek underneath the cover here. Cam chain. Cam chain feels pretty tight. Looks like we're missing one bolt already. Actually, 
We're missing three bolts. There's oil in it up there. Let's see what the cam looks like. And the valves, let's see. So far everything looks pretty good. Mm, cam chain's a bit loose, actually. Not too bad. We're at top dead center right here. Two dots are up, and that is up. Cam lobes facing down. That valve is open. That valve is open. That valve is open. That valve is open. So all of them, all of them are open. None of them are tight. So that's good. So everything checks out there. So rockers look good. Rockers look really good. Cam sprocket can come off. Make sure we don't drop anything in the lower end here. Let's sit there. And then back here is the cam chain tensioner. So we can get that out of there. Tensioner coming out. Now the tensioner looks really good. No play in there at all. I think that's maxed out. Let's see. Yep, it was maxed out. There we go. Crisscross pattern. Don't want to warp the head.
Looks like they're all the same size. All right, we got the header pipe off here. Now there's a couple 10 millimeter bolts right here. Head is out, gas off. Like the piston was hitting into the valves. Look right there. I don't know if that's factory or no, it doesn't look like it. And then there's a little spot right there too. Right there, right there, a little nick. So that's weird. Dots are to the right side, you can see. That's good. Cylinder looks pretty good in there. No imperfections yet, so. Cylinder's coming off next. Let's see what that piston looks like. See if the rings are stuck. Alright, all the rings appear to be free. It's really weird. <laughs> None of them are stuck. Um, rod feels good. Zero up and down play. Just a little side to side, so you can see nothing. Nice and tight, just a little side to side. So, rod is perfectly fine. That was what I was a little bit worried about. So, that's awesome. So, the bottom end looks good. So we'll get this piston off and take a closer look. But you can see on the back, it was scraping pretty good. So it must have gotten hot at one point. You can see right there. I don't know if the oil rings are stuck. No oil rings aren't stuck. All right, so Rod officially checks out. Zero up and down play. All right, let's check out the cylinder next. As you can see, no cracks or anything in the cylinder. Really looking it over. There's a flashlight in there, making sure there's no cracks at all. Zero imperfections on the cylinder, so the cylinder looks perfect. 
check out the piston. You can see all the rings were free. And it looks like the rings were in the correct way. You can see the ends on them. There's an N right there on the second ring. Facing up. Wheel rings aren't stuck at all. Doesn't appear to be at least. Yeah, nothing stuck, so let's see what the ring gap is. First one. Second one. Everything looks pretty decent. Let's get the oil rings off. whole lot of room in there for it to move around. So, yeah, everything's looking pretty good so far. All right, here's the first ring going in. Let's see what the ring gap is at. It's not too terribly bad. It's right there. I mean, it's bigger than, than normal, but not, not horrible. Like, it shouldn't have smoked that much. Let's see what we're at here. Well, it's pretty big. We're at the highest setting here. Let's see if we can do two of the highest settings. Nope. So it's not like that bad. It's a little more than... 24 thousands. It's probably 30 thousands. So it's out of spec, but not not horrible. Second ring. This one's really bad. <laughs> yep, that would be the problem. Look at that ring gap right there. That is horrible. That's huge. Let's see what that's at. Yeah, that gap is all these added up. So 43, 66, about 90 thousands <laughs> that ring gap is. Absolutely horrible. Huge. I don't know why the second ring was so much worse than the first ring. Look at this. Put them on top of each other. It's like a bunch of it was shaved off or something. Look at that. All right, here is the head. Springs look normal. Cam looks good. You can see all the lobes look perfect. No imperfections in the lobes. Bearing feels good in there. Everything spins smooth. Surface of the head looks good. Let's flip it around here. So valves obviously look like they've been burning oil. Um, lots of carbon on there, but those don't look that bad. Not seeing any place where these could have hit the piston. So I'm not sure if that was from before. I don't know if somebody rebuilt it. I'm not sure if something got stuck in here and it uh, hit against the head. I'm not sure. But uh, you can see from the piston, Something hit right there and right there, because that's raised. See that? Those are not supposed to be there. So, I really don't know what that's about, but these would be the intake valves hitting. <laughs> so, 
thought that was kind of interesting. So, so far we need a new piston, a new water pump gasket, and a new top end gasket. So that's, that's basically it. That's not too bad. Um, we'll check the valves here in a little bit, but I wanted to move on to the CV axles. I'm a little worried about these, so there should not be that much play in there. I mean, that's a lot of play. And then check this one out over here. This one you can pull out almost all the way out of the front diff, if you look in there. There's a huge gap. Look at that. Look how much I can move that. It's kind of hard to focus, but you guys get the point. I mean, look at this. <laughs> so, something's definitely going on with the front diff or the CV axles in the front. I don't know if they're worn down or what. this off of here. Alright, A arm finally came off. I had to get my air hammer out to get that off. Now this can be pulled out. Now I'm gonna try to pull Let's see if we can get her out of here. <laughs> Pulled right out. <sighs> that was lucky. Look how rusty that is in there. Jeez. So. Oh, the bearings sound really bad. chunks. There's not a lot of play in the bearing at all. So that's not where the slop was. The slop was the splines. I don't know if the splines are bad on the, on the CV axle or what. But it would probably make sense to replace the uh, bearings in there as well. Well, we better add brake pads to the list too. Almost non-existent. Look how thin those are. Alright, on to the next one here. I had to use the air hammer again for that. Oh, that one just fell right out. Oh, what the heck? That's crazy. That 
was barely even in there. Bearing sounds a little rough, doesn't it? Is this even the right size? Huh. Doesn't even lock in place there. So I think these bearings are all rounded out in here. Open. This whole thing can come out. I think it's loose in here. Front dip out. I swore I'd never do this job again. And look where we are. We're doing it again. What a pain in the butt. But we got the front dip out. Let's see what's going on with it. Look at all that rust in there. All right, let's see what's in this diff. I am suspecting a lot of water. But let's see. Let's see what's in there. This should be interesting. Oh boy. That looks like water to me. That is straight water right there. Well, <laughs> that's, that's not a great sign. So, we're off to a bad, bad start here. in there. Oh boy, there's a little oil. Looks like there was a little grease in there at one point. It's a good thing we're getting this out because this is really bad. Listen to that bearing. Jeez. Yeah, this all needs to be cleaned out. There's tons of water in there. 
So we got this out right at the right time here. That uh, was extremely close. Wow. That sounds really bad. All right, here's this part. I wonder if the 4x4 wasn't working all the time. This is extremely horrible. <laughs> so, that sounds pretty good actually. It sounds pretty smooth. Nothing's too rusty or anything. It's lucky I had a little bit of oil left in there just to coat everything. Let's see, everything's pretty shiny yet. Wait, look at all the water in there. That's crazy. So it looks like the seals probably failed and, that, and then let water in. <laughs> There's straight water in there. So we'll order up some new bearings and uh, this should be good to go. So. This thing is going to need a lot of work. I picked this up with hopes that uh, it would have been like a stuck piston ring or something, but unfortunately it needs a top end rebuild and a differential rebuild. So here are all the parts right here, all laid out, ready to go. Quite a few parts that we need to replace. So CV axles we need to replace both in the front, the bearings and the differential and the, the one little bearing in there as well. Uh, new piston and possibly a new cylinder, new top end gaskets, valve seals, and I think that's pretty much it. So I mean it's not going to be that expensive but it'll probably be around $400 to uh, replace everything. Oh and then an air filter too. And uh, we're going to go order up some parts and then next video we will Try to tackle this thing and get it up and running, hopefully without it smoking, and uh, get that 4x4 working perfectly. And we'll be plowing snow in no time. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next one, and until next time, we are out.